and welcome back to another professional prep video. My name is Rupvik Parikh and in this video we're going to cover how to call methods, specifically void methods, with parameters. So we have chosen that we are going to omit Java graphics for now. It is not actually a part of the course um, APCSA. We're going to skip it for now. However, we may make a video on it later. And if you want to see some graphics, please feel free to email us and we can certainly do that. However, let's get going with this video. So as you can see, this class is very similar to what we had before. Um, in, in this video, we're going to be working primarily with this method in here. And we're not even going to be editing that. We're just going to be using this statement and printing some values here. So let me just, to summarize, uh, we, t we created a Toyota object of this car class and gave it the necessary um, values for variables. We've added a couple variables here, by the way. Um, we have a double price from last time. We also have a boolean is all wheel drive and we have an int miles per gallon. Now, none of this is really accurate to a Toyota. Um, the prices and everything are off. We're just showing how to use some object oriented programming here. So please um, do not actually think that um, Toyotas get 10 miles per gallon or anything like that. None of that is true. However, let's use let's get let's get going here actually so as you can see we've added in a couple of these variables um and this set method what it's going to do is it accepts these three parameters p a and m which are supposed to be price all-wheel drive and um, mpg or miles per gallon um i just didn't want to use the same name and it sets it to it sets these three variables to whatever is passed in in the actual class. And then these three methods return these values respectively. So you can print what they are currently, um, what values they currently store for price all wheel drive, is all wheel drive and miles per gallon. So the, um, let's start with a couple of definitions. So we know what a parameter is, but there's actually a couple types of parameters. So formal parameters are parameters in the heading of a method. And what I mean by that is going to be right here. So take this void method set car, which I said we'd be using. These are going to be your formal parameters. They specify the data types and they have the names. And for actual parameters, those are our other types of parameters. They're parameters used in the calling of a method. So for example, if I wanted to type in something here, say we wanted to do that, these are what we're going to call the actual parameters. That's what we're actually using to call. So now with that definition underway, we have some rules on calling methods, which is what we're going to cover in this video. In this case, we'll be using set car with the parameters. That's a void method. So there's a few rules here. The first rule is going to be that the quantity of formal and quantity of actual parameters must match. So let's, for example, take this. Let's get rid of this 15. So now you'll notice that we have two actual parameters, 7000.0 and true. But we have three formal parameters. So that's going to cause an error here. You can see actual and formal argument list differ in length. So that's going to be our error there, but we need to add in that 15 again, and this will work and print out our correct values, which you can see right there. So now we have some more rules, however. So the data types also need to match of the formal and actual. So say that we changed seven, uh, say that we changed true to 20. We just changed it from a Boolean that it's expecting to an int. Now let's try running that. Well, 20 is obviously not a Boolean, and it says incompatible types, int cannot be converted to Boolean, etc. There's your error there. However, we changed the 20 back to, what did we have it before? True, maybe. And we do not get an error, because that is what the code was expecting. We, our third rule here is that the order of formal and actual parameters must match. Now, in some cases, you won't actually get an error for this. If it's expecting three integers, for example, it's just going to be a bug in your program that, that's not going to produce the results that you want at all. But you're not actually going to get an error because if you pass an int, then it'll take the int. It, it won't know 
which in you want what what in represents what value. In this case, however, it will matter if we switch the order. Say that we put true. Say that we switch true with seven thousand point zero. This is going to raise a concern because the order needs to match, and the first formal parameter is a double, and we're putting in a true. So that this is where the order switch matters. The data types we do have one double, one boolean, one int in each, but the order is going to be the issue in this case. And sure enough, here you see the error for that. So let's just switch that back. And sure enough, we're going to get our bug to be fixed. So there's that rule. And the last thing I wanted to say, it's not really a rule, but the, about the actual parameters, they can be expressions or return methods, etc. They can really be anything. So what I mean by that is say instead of 7,000, or actually let's make our lives easier here. Instead of 15, we want to put in 7 plus 8. We are allowed to do that, actually, and it will print out the 15. So you can put in that expression there, and likewise, you could you could do that for anything, really. So that's how that works. I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, a lot of times, we could be using methods right here, um, so keep that in mind as we go. Um, that's how you can use your parameters here. Um, that was just a clarification video. Once again, please remember to email us, subscribe to our channel, and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. We will see you next time. Thank you very much, everyone.